Welcome back as the Redstone Scientist here, and I am back with another lesson of Mastering Minecraft. Today we'll be learning about various types of clocks. This is one of the absolute most important parts of working with command blocks, so be sure you completely understand today's lesson. Make sure to stick around at the end to see today's homework, as well as a fun new segment. Alright, so get your pencil and paper ready, open your textbooks, and let's begin. Luckily, we don't have any homework to go over from last time, so let's just jump right in. Prior knowledge required. Basic redstone understanding. An understanding of game ticks versus redstone ticks. You can find out all this information in Lesson 1.0a. Click on either of these concepts to be redirected to that video. Let's take a look at the vocabulary for today's lesson. We have clock, pulse, comparator clock, set block clock, fill clock, and hopper clock. If you remember from last time, game ticks and redstone ticks are two different things. Just to review, a game tick is supposed to be 1 20th of a second, and a redstone tick is supposed to be 1 10th of a second. I say supposed to be because it often depends on the performance of your game or the server you're playing on. If you are a server owner yourself, you will know that sometimes in the server console it will say something like, can't keep up, skipped 101 ticks, or something along those lines. But in ideal conditions, a game tick is 1 20th and a redstone tick is 1 10th. As a general note in this series, whenever I talk about timing, you can always assume I mean under ideal conditions. But why do we care about these ticks? Well, we care about them because it lets us control and understand the timing of our contraptions. Command blocks can run off of game ticks, and repeaters and comparators can only run off of redstone ticks. If you take one thing away from today's lesson, take this away. Once again, command blocks are able to run off of game ticks, and repeaters and comparators can only run off of redstone ticks. But all you really need to know, for right now at least, is how to build them. Again, this is a series on command blocks, not general redstone, but we have to know how to activate our commands in the first place. This is a very common clock. It doesn't really have a particular name. For our purposes, we will most often refer to this as a repeater clock or a regular clock. This clock works by utilizing the delay properties of repeaters. Remember, we can set a repeater to have anywhere from 1 to 4 redstone ticks. So if we use a little simple addition, we can delay a redstone signal for the exact amount of time that we want to delay it by. A good rule of thumb to remember is that 10 redstone ticks equals 1 second. This is because 1 tenth of a second multiplied by 10 equals 1 second. 10 redstone ticks is equivalent to 2 repeaters on 4 ticks, and 1 repeater on 2 ticks. So if we power this line of redstone, it will take exactly 1 second for this lamp to turn on. So what does that have to do with the clock? Well, by taking a signal from anywhere on this clock, we can guarantee that exactly once every second, we will receive a pulse from the clock. A pulse is simply a short burst of a redstone signal. Let me show you an example starring my new friend, Stevie Anna Jones. guess how the clock was used? Let's take a look. I knew that I wanted the cobblestone blocks to go into the lava every 5 seconds or so to give the player enough time to jump across them. So I knew I had to create a clock that activated every 50 redstone ticks, because 1 tenth times 50 equals 5 seconds. So to create this with repeaters, I did 4 ticks times 12 plus 2 ticks. Then I took an output from this block right here and fed it into a line of pistons, separated by repeaters set to 4 ticks. So every 5 seconds, this one will deactivate, then this one 4 ticks later, and then 4 more ticks later, this one. The reason the pistons reactivate is because the pulse moves on further through the clock. If you have any questions about this, please leave a comment on this video. It's important to note that depending on how long I initially power the clock, the pulse length will last different amounts of time. This is called a hopper clock. 
This can be sped up with command blocks, but we will cover that in this slash block data lesson. Just use shift click to put two hoppers going into each other, and then use one or more comparators to take some outputs. Then just throw an item in there. There are more complicated and more customizable ways to do this, such as Etho's hopper clock, but for the most part, we won't need them in this series. The next type of clock we will look at is called the comparator clock. I'm not going to fully explain how this works because it is so simple to make. If you want to know more about how it works, I will link to a video on screen now. All you have to do is place down a comparator, put down redstone looping into the side of the comparator, then set the comparator to subtraction mode by right-clicking. Then all you have to do is provide a full power source to the back of the comparator. We can use this to activate commands far more rapidly than a regular clock. By the way, on slower computers you will occasionally not be able to see the redstone flash like this, but trust me, it's working. The same goes for the next two clocks I show. Now we finally come to some command blocks. The set block and fill clocks are the fastest clocks there are. I'm not going to explain how these clocks work for now, because I haven't explained these commands yet, but rest assured there will be lessons explaining them. But for right now, you need to know how to make the basic versions of these clocks so that we can learn the simpler commands first. So let's look at a set block clock. There are a couple of ways to do this. I'll just show you the way we will mostly use in this series. I'll show you the other ways when we do the slash set block lesson. Place a command block on the bottom, put in this command. Place a command block on the top, put in this command, and place a redstone block in the middle. All the commands will be in the description. This clock outputs every game tick. This means that you can activate commands 20 times a second. Next up is the fill clock. Same as before, I won't explain how it works now, but there will be a lesson on the command in the future. The fill clock allows you to get redstone pulses in far more than just one place. Again, there are a few ways to do this one. This is a highly customizable clock, so I will just show you one version for now. This is the primary way we'll be using early on in the series. This version will pulse redstone 20 times a second from 10 redstone blocks. Place your first command block on the bottom, and put in this command. Then place your next command block on the top, and put in this command. Then put a redstone block in between. Once again, all the commands will be in the description. This was just a quick glance at some of the clocks we will be using. These are vital for larger contraptions. To find out more about clocks, check out the links in the description. So, let's review. Whenever I talk about timing in this series, you can assume that I always mean under ideal conditions. Command blocks can run off of game ticks, and repeaters and comparators only run off of redstone ticks. The main types of clocks we will be using in this series are repeater clocks, comparator clocks, set block clocks, fill clocks, and occasionally hopper clocks. You do not need to fully understand any of these clocks at this point as long as you can make them. I'll be explaining more versions of the set block and fill clock in more detail and more on how they work in the slash set block and slash fill lessons. And as for homework today, practice creating the set block clock and the fill clock that I showed you. Today's homework world provides an easy environment to practice. Also, answer these questions for next time. Number one, how long does a game tick last? A redstone tick? Number two, how many times a second will a set block clock pulse? Number three, how many redstone ticks do you need for one minute? Game ticks? Want some extra credit? Make a lamp that turns on every 10 seconds using the concepts you learned today. Today's homework requires a world download. The world download has a chest filled with command blocks at your spawn point. All right, class, that's all I have time for today. Please leave a like, a comment, or better yet, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to check out the jam-packed description for more science. See you next time. And of course, thanks for watching.